I think his constituents will wonder what on earth he's doing. They are struggling with the cost of living, uh, with the impact of the NHS crisis, uh, much of which he's to blame for, for his failure as a Prime Minister. And there he is, swanning off around the world, around the United States, getting paid for it. I think people will be flabbergasted and angry. Uh, wherever Boris Johnson goes, this sort of cloud of money seems to follow him, and I think it's quite outrageous. If you could start with your name and your title. Hi, it's Ed Davey. I'm the MP for Kingston Surbiton and the leader of the Liberal Democrats. And we've just heard this afternoon that former Prime Minister Boris Johnson has declared nearly two and a half million pounds on the register of interests, which is a huge sum. Uh, do you think that MPs should be allowed to claim that much? I think his constituents will wonder what on earth he's doing. They are struggling with the cost of living, uh, with the impact of the NHS crisis, uh, much of which he's to blame for, for his failure as a Prime Minister. And there he is, swanning off around the world, around the United States, getting paid for it. I think people will be flabbergasted and angry. Uh, wherever Boris Johnson goes, this sort of cloud of money seems to follow him, and I think it's quite outrageous. It's quite interesting because he gave an interview last week to Nadine Dorries in which he said he's got a lot more time now to spend time with his children and do all sorts of activities. I mean, do you think that he's completing or, you know, following his duties as an MP? Boris Johnson can't be doing the job as an MP. It's a full-time job, whether you're a front bencher or a back bencher, whether you're a cabinet minister or a party leader. He really ought to be working hard for his constituents. They're the ones who put him there and he's failing them and he's lining his own pockets. I think he'll be pretty angry, not just in his constituency, but across the country. What do you think that this says about the Tory party in general, if you can take a position as Prime Minister and then so soon afterwards claim this amount of money? Well, I think Boris Johnson, in his behaviour both as Prime Minister and now afterwards, uh, has brought um, the Conservative Party into disrepute. And uh, hard on his footsteps, we've seen uh, the scandal around Nadim Zahawi, the former Conservative Party chairman, uh, with penalties for not paying his taxes. I think the sleaze around the Conservative Party is uh, now rotten to the core, and I think that's why, why so many people, including the Liberal Democrats, want the Tories out of government. On a wider level, I mean, how do you think that constituents or even, you know, any Tory voter around the country will feel if they're suffering with a cost of living crisis hearing this news? Well, when Liberal Democrats and, uh, across the country are talking to voters on the doorstep, particularly when we meet lifelong Conservative voters, they're, they're angry, they feel betrayed, they feel the Conservative Party is out of touch and doesn't let them down. So increasingly, we're seeing in, in the blue wall seats where it's a big fight between the Liberal Democrats and the Conservatives in seats like we won in the three by-elections the last 18 months, um, many of those lifelong Tories saying they're, they're never going to vote Conservative ever again. Mm. And you've got the potential in a, a very true blue seat. You've got Dominic Raab's seat potentially up for grabs at the next general election. I mean, do you think it's possible that the Liberal Democrats can snatch a, a Surrey safe seat? Uh, well, I don't think it's safe anymore because the Liberal Democrats are after Dominic Raab. And I would say for anyone who lives in Eastern Walton, if you want to see the back of your Conservative MP, who's not a good MP, let's face it, and he's been a polling minister with all the, uh, the scandals surrounding him, uh, I think you should get together, back the Liberal Democrat candidate there, Monica Harding, who'd be a fantastic MP uh, and would sweep away all this, uh, all this horror around uh, Dominic Raab. What sort of factors or you know, scenarios would turn voters away from Conservatives in those seats? Well, I think people had expected the Conservatives to be competent and now they've turned out to be utterly incompetent. That they'd have some sort of plan and they've now got, clearly got no plan that they'd be listening to people and now it's clear that they come out of touch entirely. Uh, and Dominic Raab represents that. He represents everything that's wrong with the modern Conservative Party. Uh, and many Conservatives don't recognise uh, Dominic Raab's Conservative Party any longer. Um, so that's why they're switching and in Eastern Walton, they're switching in droves to the Liberal Democrats. Mm. Moving on to strikes, how would the Lib Dems handle those differently? You've got to start talking to people get round the table. The Conservatives have uh, frankly not realised how tough it is for people in the public services, whether it's nurses, whether it's you know ambulance uh, drivers, uh, and many others, teachers and, for example. Um, the cost of living is hitting uh, those professions very, very hard and they're already short of nurses and doctors and ambulance workers and, and teachers. And so when you've got a huge shortage and you're seeing inflation going through the roof, it surely is right to pay people more. 
And the fact that Conservatives don't get that shows just how out of touch they are. Do you think that some of this has to do with the conservative, uh, Conservatives' sort of reticence to acknowledge what's happening with Brexit? I think the Conservatives won't acknowledge lots of things. Uh, their, their failed trade deal with our European uh, partners, uh, their failure to protect people from rising energy bills, their failure to do anything with mortgage rates which are going through the roof thanks to their mini budget uh, disaster which you know has shoved up mortgage rates, hit people's pensions and I think this overall failure is, is something that uh, is now coming home to haunt the Conservative Party as, as it should do. I'm sure you're looking ahead to the local elections. If you were to do well then, your parties to do well in those, will you look at fielding more candidates at the general election? Well, we, we will field candidates across the country in every constituency. Uh, there are some constituencies where we have a real chance of beating the Conservatives, where only the Liberal Democrats can beat the Conservatives. In places like Surrey and Hertfordshire, across what we call the Blue Wall seats, mm. after our uh, very historic victory in True Blue Buckinghamshire in Cheshire and a little while ago. And so we are confident going into these local elections. We do recall that four years ago, when these council seats were last fought, we made gains of 700. Uh, we were the, the biggest uh, growing party four years ago, so we're coming off a very high base. But I think with our local campaigns, focusing on things like the crisis in the NHS, the need to support our, uh, our GPs, uh, to have a minimum wage for, for care workers, uh, our, uh, our policies on the cost of living to help people who are really struggling, these are, are finding resonance on the doorstep. People realise that we are talking uh, about policies that would really help them and their families and their community. And so that's a positive reason why they're coming to join and vote for the Liberal Democrats. I know that you've also got a campaign on care at the moment as well. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, I've been a carer all my life. I cared for my mum when she was terminally ill and my uh, grandmother later, now my disabled son. So care is something very personal to me. Um, and since I became the leader, I decided that I wanted to the party, the Liberal Democrats, to be the voice of carers, whether they're family carers, unpaid, looking after loved ones at home, or they're the professional carers in our care homes, going into people's homes to deliver that care, many of whom are very low paid. And when you look at care, you realise that unless we tackle the social care crisis, which is mainly a shortage of staff, we won't tackle the NHS crisis because people are being stuck in hospital, waiting for care packages. Because people are stuck in hospital, that means people who can't get into out of A&E and the ambulance are backing up and people can't get ambulances who are having serious heart attacks and strokes. So the whole NHS crisis could be dramatically improved if we sorted out social care. So what Liberal Democrats are saying is have a two pound increase over and above the national minimum wage. Give the best minimum wage possible to care workers so we can tackle the shortages in uh, care workers and therefore transform social care and the NHS. I mean, as a lifetime carer, there was a story about yesterday which was, it was reported by The Sun, that robots could be introduced into care homes to help combat the care shortage. I mean, when you hear stories like that, do you think it perhaps makes a farce out of the system? Well, I'm all in favour of technology to help any sphere of life, whether it's health or care or education or whatever. But you cannot replace uh, the love of a human being for another human being. And when you're caring for someone, it's not only very personal and very up close, but it's also very demanding and it changes from minute to minute. And I'm afraid no robot's ever going to be able to replace uh, the importance of human, human care. You've just been in Westminster Hall and you've just heard Zelensky speak. It, what do you think about that? Do you think that, be, looking at him today, are you pleased with the way that Britain has you know, contributed to the war in Ukraine? Well, I'm proud that it's been cross-party support across the whole of the House of Commons, backing military aid for the Ukrainian army and the Ukrainian people. And I'm so proud of the British people who stood so firm, so united, so determined in their support for the brave heroes uh, in Ukraine. And it was a huge honour to meet President Zelensky today. I had a chance to talk to him, uh, wish him well, pledge our full support. The Liberal Democrats are actually a sister party for the party in Ukraine that President Zelensky leads. So um, we feel a particular affinity to him, what he's trying to do, and we will we'll always support him. And we think, if anything, 
uh, Britain's support should be increased. Can I ask you about the Wagner Group, which we spoke about today during PMQs. Do you think it needs to be a prescribed terrorist organisation? Yes. The Wagner Group are a horrific mercenary group uh, run by Russians and they, uh, they take their evil ways across the world. Uh, but in Ukraine, they are killing brave Ukrainian soldiers on a daily basis. President Zelensky, last time, last time he came to the House of Commons, asked us to treat Russia as a terrorist state. Liberal Democrats agree with that request from President Zelensky. And that's why I, I asked the Prime Minister if on this day, the symbolic day, with President Zelensky addressing both Houses of Parliament, that the British government should announce that the Wagner Group was being prescribed as a terrorist group. Um, very strong sim symbol, very strong signal, and a very strong legal uh, uh, message. I really regret that Rishi Sunak wasn't able to answer me in the positive, and I'll be following up with that. Uh, it's quite outrageous that we are not prescribing this evil group, the Wagner Group. Do you think there's any particular reason we haven't done that? Well, the government aren't coming clear yet. They're not being transparent. They're hiding away. Uh, and I don't think that's acceptable. I think the British people want this horrible uh, mercenary group to, to be prescribed, to be banned.